The big first thing that I'm going to start with is uh, sort of a, a context uh, setting for how Canvas does grades in, in terms of uh, uh, philosophy. Uh, one of the main things in Canvas, and this, this sort of goes with a lot of different features, not just grades, but um, the visibility of things and how notifications are generated and things. Uh, a lot of uh, core Canvas philosophy is that sh students should have access to all of the, their information um, basically all the time. So uh, there's a lot of decisions that Canvas made with regards to how things are posted and how grades work uh, that default to certain things because of that philosophy. So um, for example, there's a default to uh, automatically show grades to students as soon as a grade is put in and that kind of thing. There, there are settings for that and we'll get to those in just a second. Uh, but ju just, so, just to sort of wrap your brain around how Canvas is thinking about grades. The other thing is that Canvas was designed with sort of faculty simplicity in mind. So unlike iLearn, uh, there's fewer uh, knobs and dials to, to sort of tweak to, to get the grade book uh, and your grades in the direction you want to go uh, in favor of a more standardized approach to, to how grades work. There is some flexibility and customization that it, that is possible, but it, it isn't as deep as iLearn would let you go. Uh, and we'll we'll get to those uh, when when uh, we we start talking about things like categories and weights and that and that kind of thing. So the the first thing that we want to talk about here is going to be in course settings. So uh, we're all seeing my screen here. Uh, this is our course. So down here in the course navigation, I'm going to go to settings. There is a setting that is very important that uh, you need to decide if you're going to set at the beginning of the semester or not, and it's this grading scheme. Uh, I do have it checked because it's checked from the last time that uh, we did this workshop. But it, essentially, this is what determines whether you're going to show letter grades uh, for your students or not. Uh, if this checkbox isn't checked, Canvas will default to using points for everything, uh, including the, the course total. So if you do want to have a letter grade, you do want to check this checkbox. And uh, we have a default SF state grading scheme here. It's a drop down menu. So both of these are actually now the same. Um, but this default SF state grading scheme is what we brought over from iLearn. So it has all the breakdowns of all the grades uh, in exactly the same way as it was in iLearn. And uh, if you wanted to take a look at what that looks like, you can hit this view and edit, and it'll give you the breakdown here. It's basically by percentage what, what brackets or what letter grade. Um, you can go in here and and, um, and modify this if, if you wanted to, um, if you do this uh, grading schemes right here. Um, I, you can't edit the, the SF state one because it's it's a standard grading scheme for, for the campus. So um, that one's sort of set. But that, that is a checkbox that you want to check. And you do want to do this ahead of time. Um, you, you can change this after the fact. But because it does change how things are displayed to students, uh, it, it is highly recommended that that you do this as a part of getting your course set up step uh, is come in here and enable the course grading scheme. So again, that's in settings. Uh, it's called grading scheme and it's this checkbox right here. So once you've checked that box, hit update course details and uh, that that'll just be set for your for your course. So the next thing in Canvas that's really important is dates. And uh, Canvas makes use of dates in a lot of different places. Um, but you can see here, there's this coming up section uh, at the bottom of the course page. Uh, this is reflective of all of the items in your course that have due dates attached to them. So uh, there's a lot of sequencing and things that happen with dates. So when you're going and creating anything that's graded, uh, it is very important that you set accurate due dates for things. Um, for students, uh, what, what this does is it brings up a sort of a to-do list for students to, to know what's coming up next. Uh, but for faculty, it also pops up things in here that require grading. So if there's something that has been submitted that uh, needs to be graded, it'll also come up here. And it's all sort of sorted uh, by the due dates. But the other reason that this is important, and um, we'll, we'll actually go into the gradebook now and talk about this, is that there's a lot of settings in the, or there's in particular one setting that's very important in the gradebook that is uh, determined by the due date. 
Um, so one, one of the things that we talked about was uh, that Canvas defaults to sort of showing grades all the time to students automatically as soon as the grades are entered. Um, so that that behavior is actually controlled in the gradebook. Um, if you go up here to this gear wheel, uh, there's this tab called late policies and grade posting policies um, that sort of together determine whether students can see things or not or what, what happens when they see. So when you go in here by default, and I, again, I have these checked because of the last time that we taught this workshop, but uh, by default, these are unchecked. This top section uh, is what happens to an item once the due date has passed. It allows you to set a, a default grade. So the, this is a way that you would be able to say, okay, if somebody didn't submit something by the due date, they automatically get a zero. Um, you would go in here to late policies, hit the checkbox, and then put in a zero percent here. And this box, you could actually put in whatever you want. Um, so if if you if you somehow have a policy that's Oh, if uh, if you don't submit something, the lowest grade you can get is a fifty percent. For example, you you can do that, but uh, mo most people, I would imagine, would put a zero into this box. And then there's this secondary uh, section down here where you can automatically apply a deduction of a certain percent by a certain time period that something is late. So if you do accept late submissions. But you wanted to be, uh, you wanted to set up a, a situation where students get deducted points for submitting something late. Uh, you can go in here into the late policies and uh, enable that. So if you check this box, the example that we have here is they get de deducted two percent per day that they're late for a uh, maximum total where uh, they cannot drop below a sixty percent. So so that uh, this can go by day or by hour. Uh, hour is a little um, draconic because th this is literally by hour, it's going to deduct this amount of, of percent. So I, I would recommend if you're going to make use of this feature, leave it at D. Um, and then this lowest possible grade is basically just making it a floor so that if somebody submits something late, there's not a possibility where they're just going to automatically fail um, because they were late. Um, you probably don't want to create a situation if you're uh, accepting late submissions where they do all this work and fail anyway, uh, because that that's not really a fair situation for students to be in. So th those are the two uh, late policy uh, things. And, and again, th those are very closely tied together with due dates. If you don't have due dates set for your items, uh, these don't function correctly. So uh, if you are a person that that sort of has more of an open-ended policy of when students can submit things in, in your course, um, you're not going to be able to do these uh, sort of activities. As there's not going to be anything for them to trigger on. All right, so I'm going to move on then to the next setting here in the gradebook settings, the grade posting policy. So as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, there is a uh, sort of underlying philosophy within Canvas to uh, make sure that students get access to all of their information all the time as soon as it's available to them. So by default, uh, the way that Canvas works is as soon as you post a grade, it's available to that specific student for that specific assignment. Um, so that setting is controlled here uh, in the grade posting policy. And, and I do see your hand. Uh, I'll, I'll get to you in just a second. Um, so this by default will be set to automatically post grades, but if you are in a situation where you want to be able to grade all of the uh, submissions for something first and then release it, you can actually go in here and change this uh, to manually post grades. So uh, there are a couple of caveats with this. Uh, this setting does apply to the whole gradebook, so it's it's something that, again, you want to think about ahead of time. Uh, and the reason for that is if you've started entering grades and then realized, oh, no, I actually wanted to manually post grades and you go change this setting after the fact, uh, it is not retroactive. It only applies to things that you haven't graded yet. So uh, you, you do want to make this decision at the very beginning uh, before you start entering grades. The other thing is that this will apply to everything in the uh, in the course. So uh, this also includes things that are automatically graded, like quizzes. So if you uh, want to have a situation where you're manually releasing grades, you are going to have to manually release grades for everything, uh, not just manually graded things. So so that is also something to keep in mind. 
Um, so that that is controlled here. Uh, again, it's in that gear wheel in the grade book under grade posting policy. So this is something to think about at the beginning of your class. All right. The, the last thing that I'm going to touch on here in the grade book is this advanced tab it has one checkbox in it uh, that says allow final grade override. And what, what this does is uh, the default behavior of Canvas is that the grade total is sort of automatically calculated based on whatever grades you've input. Um, so that behavior is very similar to iLearn. Uh, what checking this box does is it adds an additional column where you can uh, override the final grade that, that's been calculated. So if you want to do that within the Canvas context, instead of uh, doing it separately when you're entering the final grades, um, you can go in here to advanced and hit the checkbox, and that, that'll give you a box where you can override the final grade. Um, so that that's that's basically in, in terms of settings uh, in the gradebook. There, there's uh, not a lot of things to tweak in the gradebook directly, as I mentioned before. Um, things like weights and categorization and, and everything is actually done somewhere else. And uh, we'll we'll get to those uh, in in a sec when we start talking about how to organize your your own grades. Um, so so that's basically it. Once you're done here, you hit apply settings, and and it'll apply whatever changes you made. Um, people in my class are doing very terribly, so so we'll we'll need to address that um, in in class later on. All right, so uh, the next thing that we're going to talk about is creating assignments, um, and the well. We'll sort of go through the process of creating an assignment, uh, and and we'll we'll address some things there. So uh, the most common way of creating an assignment is on the modules page. Uh, here on the modules page, I'm going to go ahead and hit plus, uh, and I'm going to add an assignment. I'm going to create a new assignment. I'm going to call this paper four, and add an item. And when you do it from here, it basically just creates a blank assignment um, with no settings set. So you do have to click on it and then hit edit to get to the edit page. And in this box is where you could put in your prompt or, or whatever it is that, that you want. I would suggest putting something in here uh, just so that your students know what sort of assignment this is. So the big thing here is points. And points is basically how many points is this thing worth? So I'm going to say that this is worth 10 points. Uh, this assignment group is is what we'll talk about a little bit later when we talk about organizing your your grades into groups. Uh, it, it this doesn't mean like group work. This is the uh, the name that Canvas uses um, that's functionally equivalent to iLearn's categories. So so uh, Canvas calls them assignment groups instead of a gradebook categories. Assignments do let you select how you want to uh, display the grade to students, and these are the options. The default here is points, but you can do letter grade. Um, I wouldn't select something like GPA scale because that's sort of weird. Um, and then uh, percentage and complete incomplete also have their their behaviors. Per percentage is like points, uh, and, and it'll it'll sort of just determine the percentage based on things. But complete and complete is is a little it uh, strange and how that displays in terms of points and how it interacts with points. So uh, I, I would I would leave this as points or letter grade um, in, instead of picking some of the other things in there. Submission type is basically what sort of thing you're expecting. So mo most of the time people are going to select online um, and these are the options that you get here. Uh, I, I will mention the most common thing is going to be file uploads, and this also goes for if you have a, something like a video assignment. Uh, selecting vi file uploads will uh, give students the Canvas Studio button so they can upload a, uh, a video directly there. Uh, so file up uploads is the most common type, but there are other types as well. Uh, I would not use this media recordings um, because we do have access to Canvas Studio. Um, that sort of supersedes this, so so do not use this one. Uh, the, this one has some weird behavior uh, where it uploads the file directly to Canvas, which is not really ideal. Um, so do file uploads instead. All right. So submission attempts is how many attempts are allowed. Um, uh, you can you can either do limited or, or unlimited. Um, the, this again goes to whether you're going to allow people to resubmit something or not. Um, and then down here is the the important part. This assign to uh, the, this is where you set the the due date. 
So uh, by default, it says everyone. Um, this means everyone in your course, and you can go ahead and set a due date. So I'm going to set a due date of, um, I don't know, next, next October. Uh, available from is when students can start interacting with this assignment, and then until is the absolute last date that uh, students can do anything with this assignment. So this until date is very similar to iLearn's um, cutoff date. Um, it, it has the same behavior. So if you're, you are going to allow late uh, submissions, for example, you, you could do something like, um, I don't know, I made that due the 27th. So the, uh, the until date is November 3rd. So that basically gives them another week if they needed to. One, one of the features of this assigned box is that if you are in a situation where one or a couple of students need to have different dates for something, uh, maybe they have an excused absence or they've worked out some arrangement with you, you can go and give them individual due dates. Um, so uh, right here, I've set the due date for everyone, but if I wanted to make an exception, I can go and hit plus add. Um, and let's say Jeremy gets a different due date uh, because Jeremy is going to be out of town that day or something. So uh, I'm going to give Jeremy up until the 31st to, to do this. So you'll note uh, the change that happened here. Now it says Jeremy has a due date of October 31st, but everyone else has a due date of October 27th. So, so that is something that you can do at this point. So now that I'm done here, I'm going to go ahead and hit save and publish. And you can see that it's published and uh, the due dates are set here. The point value is set here. Um, and that's essentially it. Okay, so um, now that we have an assignment created here and it's by points, uh, if you wanted to additionally use a rubric, this is your opportunity to, to set that up. So you'll see that under this table that has the due dates, there's this plus rubric button. So if you wanted to add a rubric, you can go here and do that. Um, so I'm going to go here. And by default, it pulls up the last rubric that, that you were working with. Um, so the way that this works is very similar to iLearn. It has the, the criteria on the left and then the, the ratings for the criteria uh, along the top. So um, I don't know, for, for example, I'm going to uh, call this knows how to write a thesis. And that's my criteria. Then for my ratings, uh, I, it defaults to this, but you can add more if you want. Um, just to give it a, a little bit more of a of a breakdown. So, so those and knows and does not know. So the, those are that's sort of my breakdown here. Um, and you you can see that because I, I'm using a. a rubric that I had established before it was worth five points. So it, it gave me five points. You actually want this to, to uh, be the full points for whatever uh, your assignment is. Uh, in this case, because I only have one criteria, I'm, I'm just going to make this the full 10 points. And you can see that automatically updated my point scale so that it breaks down um, the way that it should. So, so now these match. The important here thing here is this checkbox, this use this rubric for assignment grading. Uh, if you don't check this box, the rubric does appear when you're going and grading, but selecting the criteria doesn't actually apply that to the grade. So um, very, very important when you're creating a rubric, check this box, otherwise you're not gonna be able to grade with it the way that you think you should be able to grade with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this rubric. And now this rubric is attached. So when I go and grade this assignment, um, I'll be able to grade with this rubric. And, I, and I'll show you an example of what grading without a rubric and grading with a rubric looks like in just a bit. So uh, I have a couple of assignments here and um, there, and we just created this, this additional assignment. So I'm gonna go and uh, show you a couple of ways that you can get to the grading page. So uh, you can see here in this coming up, uh, if I had uh, submissions, there would be a little notification here where uh, it would be a number of, uh, the, this is the number of ungraded submissions to this assignment. And you would be able to click on that number and, and it would take you directly to the speed grader interface. So th this is kind of a good thing to keep an eye on this coming up. Uh, th this also appears on the dashboard 
um, which, which I can actually show you because I'm a I'm a teacher in the uh, Growing with Canvas course. And you can see I have a lot of work ahead of me. I have a I have 247 submissions that I have to grade still um, in this one assignment and 106 in this other assignment. So you know I'm not I'm not doing a good job of time management here. Uh, but but this this list is very helpful for for instructors because it kind of gives you a bird's eye view of all of your classes and and what you need to grade. Um, but that that sort of notification also appears here this coming up. So when you go here as a teacher, it, it'll show you that same sort of thing, a number and, and a link to the assignment. Uh, so when you click on that, that takes you directly to the grading interface. The other way uh, that you can go to the grading interface is by going to speak grader directly. So if you click on an activity and then you go over here to related items and hit speed grader, it'll pull up the grading interface for that particular assignment. And so I'm going to go through this list here. You can see that all of these students are grayed out, and it's because they haven't submitted anything. Jeremy is the only person that's actually submitted something to this particular assignment. Um, so uh, when I select Jeremy, uh, Jeremy's submission comes up here. I've graded this before. Again, uh, we're, we're using this uh, same course for, for the workshop as we continue to give it. Uh, but this gives me an, ex an example of what it looks like. So all of these, like this, this common, this strike through, this highlight, um, this this pinpoint, are things that you can do on the page. So if I wanted to add uh, or highlight something, for example, I could go to this highlighter tool, and uh, just go in and select uh, this sentence. And what it'll do is it'll highlight it, but it also gives me the ability to comment. So if you're going to highlight something, you can go in here and leave a comment, um, and say, "Here." Um, our structure was a little backwards, for example. And when a student comes in and, and reviews their their uh, submission, they'll see that you highlighted this, but they'll also see the comment that was associated with that highlight. And that that goes for basically anything that that you add. So if you if you wanted to strike through something um, like this, it also pops up a comic thing, uh, and you could say this statement was unnecessary as an example oh or uh, if you wanted to add just sort of an ar arbitrary comment you could do that as well uh, with a text box uh, you can come in here and, and uh, just type in this is another comment and just type directly on the page like that as well so so that this this is pretty flexible uh, it's it's fairly similar to, to iLearn's assignment grading interface. Um, this work, own works a little bit better though, um, because it does give you this these sort of floating uh, comments here that that are directly tied to a thing uh, inside of the page that you're commenting on. So uh, the other uh, place for grading on this interface is this right hand uh, column here. And th this is basically where the actual like meat and potatoes of grading goes. So this gives you a link to the original document that was uploaded and the box where you can type in the actual grade for that particular submission. So uh, Jeremy, I had graded this before, um, got a seven out of 10. Uh, I've gone in here and revised the grades. So maybe, maybe Jeremy gets a 7.5 out of 10 now uh, because this, re this revision was better. Uh, you can see that that I already have this uh, in here, um, but this box lets you type in an overall comment. If uh, you don't want to get into the weeds like this and, and put comments directly on the page, you can make an overall comment. This version is better, um, and you can submit that. And uh, you can also do things like uh, record a video submission. So if you click this button, uh, you can see that it pulled up my camera here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start recording. It's going to give me a countdown. The revision that you uploaded for this paper is a little bit better. Um, your grammar structure can still use a little bit of work, especially in that third paragraph, as I highlighted in the comment. But overall, this is a better submission. So once I hit finish, it, it uploads and I could save it. And this now becomes part of the uh, feedback that the student gets. So if Jeremy would, were to come in and uh, look at the submission, they would see that that I had left a video comment on their paper as well. All right, so I'm going to go to the other assignment that I have now with a rubric and show you what that looks like. Um, so I'm going to go to the one that we just created actually, because that, that'll that'll be better. This has no submissions in it, so it's going to be a little bit weird because we're we're going to be grading nothing. Um, but 
if you go in here and I'm going to pick Jeremy again because you know Jeremy, Jeremy's here, so as I can pick on him. Um, so imagine that there's a paper submission here. Um, it has all the same uh, grading functionality as as the other one that that we showed. Um, again, we we didn't prepare this one earlier. But when you have a rubric, you get this additional view rubric button and clicking on it will expand the rubric. And now you can see this is the rubric that we set up earlier. I can go in here and pick a rubric and you can see that it automatically updates the points. Um, and it does give me the ability to, to make a comment on this specific criteria. So once I've finished filling out the rubric, and again, this is super simplified, you can make these... Uh, rubrics with as many criteria and rating scales as you want. And each, it doesn't have to have the same rating scale. You can have some criteria with five and some with three and some with two. Um, the, the, the idea is that, that you can just go in and set this up and, and click on the one you want. So once I hit save, um, you can see that this is now applied to, uh, to this particular uh, score automatically. I didn't have to go and type in and the same deal here, I can go and add an overall comment and record a video if I really wanted to. But that that's it. Um, ru rubrics are actually fairly easy to, to grade with. And uh, rubric grading also applies to discussions. Uh, you can apply a rubric to discussion as well if you wanted to grade those. All right, we're going to talk about quizzes now. So similar to assignments, uh, the, the best place to create this is in the modules page because then you can give it context as to where it goes. Uh, I'm going to go to the plus, and from this, I'm going to select quiz, and I'm going to create quiz, and select quiz two, and add item. Similar to the assignment, it creates sort of an empty shell of that item, so uh, I need to click on it and hit edit. And this looks fairly similar. Um, it, it gives you this sort of the details page where you can fill in all of the, the information about the quiz. Uh, sort of like how, how you want to organize if you want to shuffle the questions and, and the timeline and, and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, but there's also this additional tab up here for the actual questions. So I'm going to speed through this because mo most of these are fairly similar to assignments. Um, so here you, you get the, the same sort of uh, overall settings as to the, the assignment group where, where it's going to go. Uh, quiz does have this menu of what type of quiz this is, and th this is actually really important if you're bringing quizzes over from iLearn, uh, because when you bring over quizzes from iLearn, they all default to practice quiz, which are not graded. Um, so you do want to come in here and make sure that, that they're set to a graded quiz before you uh, release them to students. Uh, the time limit here is how, how long a student has to take this quiz. I'm, I'm just going to say 30 minutes. Um, and then uh, you, you can allow multiple attempts by checking this box, and this will expand some, some additional features there uh, for that. But um, the meat here is, again, the due date. And, and uh, this is really important because of all of the reasons that we talked about before. So I'm going to make this due on uh, November. Uh, actually, no. But let's make this quiz extra special. I'm going to make it due on Friday the 13th in October. Um, so now that I've set all the details for my quiz, then I can go in, uh, over here to the questions and start building out my quiz. So uh, I'm going to build out a quiz. I'm going to say new question. This is going to be a multiple choice. These are all the choices that are possible. I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm just going to pick multiple choice for this example. Uh, and I'm going to write in my favorite question here, which is, what color is the Golden Gate Bridge? And the way that this is structured is that uh, for multiple choice, it'll give you all, all of these possible answers. By default, it defaults to the top one is the correct answer. So I'm just going to go ahead and use that and say international orange. Then you want to add in some distractors. Um, right. And uh, you, you can add in feedback for, for each possible question, that kind of thing. Uh, but but this is the basic structure. Uh, the thing that I am going to point out here is, unlike iLearn, uh, Canvas quizzes don't let you set an arbitrary point value for the quiz as a whole. Uh, the way that it calculates the total value of the quiz is based on your questions. So if you are in a situation where you have a quiz that you want to be worth 100 points, 
your questions have to add up to 100. Um, you, you can't have it sort of do the math for you. So in this case, um, I don't know, there's going to be a 10 point question because it's, it's one question for, for this quiz. This is a very high value quiz. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and update the question. And you can see that because this one question is worth 10 points, now my overall quiz is worth 10 points. And if I were to go and add more questions, it would automatically update uh, based on that. So um, it, you can see I can't click on this to change the point value. I do have to do it on the actual question itself. So very important, uh, you, you saw that when I finished the question, there was a purple button that said, update this question. You have to click on that, and then when you're done, uh, you you hit save down here, uh, and that'll save the overall thing. I'm actually going to go ahead and save and publish and just make this available to my students. So you can see that it's a graded quiz. It's worth 10 points. Um, I, I set up that one question. Uh, because uh, this is a quiz, the best practice is once you've finished your quiz to go and preview it. Um, just so you can see what the behavior is going to be. And you can see that because I chose in the quiz settings to shuffle the answers, it, it sort of scrambled them around. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the correct answer here, and I'm going to submit. And uh, you can see that I got the 10 out of 10 uh, because the Golden Gate Bridge is actually international orange, which is a very specific paint color um, that is used for the bridge. So that's, that's quizzes. Um, that's uh, that that's that's essentially how you set the structure for for that particular thing. So there is a question in the chat about uh, individual time adjustments. So there's sort of two different ways that you do this. So uh, similar to assignments, if you are in a situation where a specific student needs to have a different date for the quiz, you would do that in the assign. Um, so, so this is a situation where a student is not going to be present during the day that this quiz is due for whatever reason. You can do the same thing. You can hit plus add. You can pick that student and give them a different um, due date. Maybe they're very superstitious and they don't want to take their quiz on October 13th. Um, you, you can do this and, and give them a different deadline. But if you are in a situation where you're changing the time, so instead of 30 minutes, the student gets an hour, uh, you would do that in moderate this quiz. And moderate this quiz uh, lets you do a couple things. Once students have submitted here, you can go in and change the point value and that kind of thing. Um, but if you're doing a, the thing where you're just giving them a different time limit, you go to moderate this quiz, you hit the pencil, and you can give them extra attempts and you can give them extra time. So it says everyone already gets 30 minutes. So I'm going to say 60 minutes. And um, so Jeremy gets, uh, yeah, I, the, it's a good thing that I'm actually catching this now. So th this is additional time. So everybody already gets 30 minutes. So I'm going to give an additional 30 minutes. So uh, Jeremy gets an additional extra minute. Uh, 30 minutes on on the attempt. So that that's where you go and do that uh, from this pencil in moderate quiz. All right. So at the very beginning, I talked about how uh, the grade book inside of Canvas doesn't really have all of the knobs and, and dials that the iLearn grade book does. And a lot of that is because uh, Canvas actually handles that in a different place. Um, in Canvas, uh, all of that uh, information for uh, categorization for dropping the lowest for weights and everything is actually handled on the assignments page. And in assignments, uh, by default, you just get this one group where all of the things that you've created in your course are sort of organized. Uh, so if you are in a situation where you wanted to create different categories or groupings of things in, in your course, uh, you would go to assignments and you could see that e even my quizzes are in here. Uh, because they're graded, uh, Canvas sort of uses assignment as a catch-all word for anything that has a grade attached to it. So if I had a discussion with grades, for example, it would also appear in this list. So uh, I want to be a little bit more uh, structured in my course. So it, I'm going to go to assignments, and I'm going to hit plus group, and uh, I'm going to dump all my quizzes together. So I'm going to call this quizzes. 
And uh, before I move anything, I, I know that uh, the, these two papers are uh, their, their own kind of unique thing. So I'm going to take one for papers as well. So now I have uh, three groups. So I have assignments, I have quizzes, and I have papers. Um, I'm going to move my quizzes. So the way that you move things is you uh, have this move handle here. So I'm going to click, hold, and drag. And I'm going to drag that down uh, into quizzes. And uh, I'm going to move these two papers into uh, this. So now, now they're sort of grouped together. So now, now I have my, my general assignments. I have a, a group for quizzes, and I have a group for papers. So now that I have this sort of structure set up is when I can do uh, things like weights and drop the lows and things like that. So if you are going to do weights, uh, once you have the structure set up, what you could do is you could go over here to the three dots menu. And uh, in here is a setting called assignment groups weight uh, with a checkbox where you can go ahead and mark that and it'll pop up this interface. Um, so this works very similarly to, to iLearn. So once you have all your categories set up, you, you can go in here and put in your weights for things. Um, I'm going to say my assignments are worth 20. My quizzes are worth 40. And you can see it gives me a running total here. So uh, if you are as uh, mathematically deficient as I am, um, you, you don't have to do the, the mental math. It just does it for you. Uh, one thing that I will point out here is that this will happily let you go over. Um, it, it doesn't sort of restrict you. So if I wanted to do that and uh, papers is just worth an extra 5%, um, I can do that if I wanted to. Um, that, that would basically amount to extra credit if I wanted to do that. But I'm not going to do that just for this example. Um, so now you can see that, that I've saved this, uh, each of these groups now has the percent total here. And th this would also be shown to students as well when they go and uh, review their grades. So th these are broken up. I don't have to worry about how many points the things are worth individually. It'll work out the math so that all of the assignments altogether are worth 20%, all of the quizzes altogether are worth 40%, and all of my papers altogether are worth 40%. So uh, if I additionally wanted to do drop the lowest now or keep the highest, uh, depending on how I wanted to work that, for each of these individual uh, assignment groups in their three dots menu, I can go and edit that. So if I wanted to drop the lowest quiz, for example, I'm going to hit edit. And uh, you can see that it gives me the percent value here, too. I can change it from here. But I can also go and drop the lowest or keep the highest. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and select one to drop the lowest and hit save. Uh, and now you can see that I have one rule applied here. Um, it's drop the lowest score. So it'll automatically drop whatever the lowest score uh, quiz here is. So one thing that uh, some people will uh, very much like, but uh, you do have to be sort of aware of, is Canvas will let you do this. Uh, you can see that this quiz is worth five points and this quiz is worth 10 points. So it's going to drop the overall lowest uh, quiz here which iLearn didn't let you do um, because I, iLearn had this whole structure of how it wanted math to work. Uh, so it does this based on percentage. So, so if uh, if this quiz gets dropped, um, ju just be aware that um, I'm dropping something that's worth less than, than this quiz, uh, just as an example. You could also do with this drop the lowest, uh, a feature called never drop. So th this doesn't make any sense the way that this is structured right now. So I'm just going to dump this in here as an example. Um, but if I was in a situation where I was going to drop the lowest, but I know one particular assignment was very important and I never wanted to drop it, I can do this, uh, add another assignment uh, and never drop quiz one. So now I have two rules applied. So I have dropped the lowest uh, score but quiz one will never be dropped. Um, so the only the only ones in contention are these two, this this quiz to an assignment with rubric. So so you can actually get pretty sophisticated with with how you want to organize these. Um, so so that that's essentially assignment groups. And now now to have assignment groups set up, if if I were to go and set up a new uh, assignment, for example, I did I wouldn't have to go and and um, sort of drag and drop things in there uh, on the assignment creation page. Uh, I can actually just add uh, an assignment directly to an assignment group now that I've created the structure there. So um, if you remember before, I had sort of glossed over this assignment group drop-down menu. 
if I click on it, you can see that my assignment groups are now in here. So I, so I can add them directly to that during the creation process. So that, that's another one of those things that, that you probably want to think about uh, how you're going to organize your course before you start building out your course. Um, I know that everybody is fantastic with time um, and with, with the way that contracts and everything work on this campus so that uh, you, you have all this time in the world to prepare your course before you unleash it on your students. Um, so, but, but I would recommend going, going in and sort of building up the structure, uh, even if you don't have all the activities set. Uh, just so that when you do create the activities, uh, you can just start popping them in as you create them instead of doing it after the fact. So it, any anything that's sort of an arbitrary grade uh, that you're not collecting something out of, uh, you would add as an assignment. So uh, if, if I go over here and I add an assignment, um, uh, participation, I could just add an assignment that doesn't have a submission type. And uh, it, it would give me a column for for me to uh, degrade this later. Um, so if I were to go into the grade book, then I'd, I'd be able to see that assignment in there and, and grade it from there. And you you basically would do that for for anything where you are going to give a grade, but you're not collecting an object. Uh, is is essentially set up a set set up an assignment with no submission, um, but give it a point value, and you'd be able to grade that. So like a field trip, for example, would would be something like that. So, so I did. I did say that I was going to touch on next credit. Um, the there is a guide that we have that sort of covers this more detail. Uh, but Canvas doesn't really do extra credit the way that that I learned it at all. Um, one of the ways that they suggest that you could do extra credit is doing this weights thing, like I like I had said before, uh, where where you could take a category and just give it extra percentage. So uh, as you go and grade things, um, the uh, students will get an additional sort of percentage point uh, if they get good grades on, on papers, for example. Um, you could also do a situation where you could just make a, a, an assignment group called extra credit. Um, that's like uh, however many percent extra credit you want to give, and then just dump your extra credit assignments into this. And because this is on top of uh, on top of a, any of the um, the hundred percent that you've given, uh, the, this will just be added in addition. Uh, you you could also do things with with like rubrics, for example. Um, if you set up a rubric uh, that's and again th this one's a little weird, um, but it, you you could you could set up a rubric that that's worth actually worth more than um, the number of points for an assignment. So if I were to go and, and select this criteria on this rubric, they would actually get a, an additional five points to this 10 point assignment. And then ultimately you could just grade out of whatever. So if if you set up your, your assignments to be worth 10 points and you type in 12 points, it'll happily take that. So um, that, that's another way that you can do extra credit. So um, yeah, you, you just do need to be aware that that you're doing math correctly and not, not giving people more points than, than you think uh, you're giving.